The goal of the non-executable memory exploit mitigation is to not let attackers just write code into memory and then execute it. So if we think about our you know, example buffer overflow that we've seen thus far, mem copying asset attacker control data into a vulnerable buffer and overflowing, well, you know, one of the canonical methods that historically when the first sort of buffer overflows were achieved, what they would do is this return address, it needs to jump somewhere into attacker controlled code, the shell code. And so what they would do is they would return into code that was found in the buffer itself. So what do you do with non-executable stack? You say, okay, boom, that memory is not executable. So to render memory non-executable means that the memory management system must have some say in it. And therefore this means that it has to be supported by the operating system, virtualization system, or firmware. So again, if you are the programmer for the operating system virtualization or firmware, that means this would be your job in order to implement this exploit mitigation. So talking a little more you know, robustly and thoroughly about it, the property that we say people are trying to achieve is what is called write XOR execute. So if you remember your truth tables, you know, if write is one and execute is one, the result is zero, false, right? So basically this can only be true if one of these is set and the other is not set. So we want write with execute to false or execute with write to false. So you can have executable memory that's not writable, writable memory that's not executable. So the idea is that data locations like the stack or the heap should just generally never be executable. These are places for data. The code is mapped by the execution environment somewhere else. Now, unfortunately, you know, modern systems and optimization required for uh, just-in-time compilation of languages like JavaScript, where they have to be just-in-time compiled in order to achieve adequate performance, well, unfortunately, these make it a little bit harder because essentially what it means is that all of a sudden on demand, this attacker controlled JavaScript comes in over the network and then it, the you know, browser, the JavaScript engine is responsible for taking that interpreted language and compiling it down to native code just in time. That native code has to go somewhere, that native code has to be written on demand and then executed. So unfortunately, uh, these tend to become you know, large holes in the write XOR execute uh, exploit mitigation technique. Additionally, uh, if an attacker has the ability to get code execution instead of you know, just jumping into their code immediately, uh, they can potentially call to some other function. So instead of returning to their code, they return to some other function. And there are you know, standard APIs like mProtect or virtual protect on Windows that are APIs specifically for the purpose of changing the permissions on memory. And so you could have started out with something like the stack or the heap marked as write only or read write. And then if the attacker has the ability to call one of these functions, they can go ahead and mark it executable. So it's read write execute. Some platforms like iOS actually, you know, explicitly disallow APIs like this from running in the context of an you know, application running in user space. And furthermore, they will even go so far as to use hardware modifications in order to backstop the uh, permissions in kernel space. So they'll use actual registers that lock regions of memory to say these things shall never be executable. Uh, and so no matter what games you play with uh, trying to change permissions, it'll never be executable. It'll only always be uh, readable or writable, but not executable. So hardware mechanisms can definitely help there, but they're not generally available. And in most general purpose operating systems, it's not the case that uh, these APIs are actually restricted in any way that would stop an attacker. So as mentioned before, the execution environment must support this, but unlike some of these other exploit mitigations, generally speaking, uh, you, the programmer, don't have to actually opt into it. So the operating system maker, the virtualization system maker, the firmware maker must enable this non-executable memory. They must you know, design the memory management subsystem to enable this mechanism, mark the stack as non-executable, but then afterwards, all the other applications or OSs or you know, the firmware itself doesn't necessarily have to opt in. But if there are any you know, meaningful caveats, we will go ahead and document those on the website for you to see.